C306, a six-wheeler made by Volvo. It's a uh, ex-military uh, vehicle, it's mostly used for ambulance. And the only uh, thing that is not original on it is that these uh, fenders here to uh, accommodate for these uh, wheels. These are 38-inch tires uh, from Arctic Trucks and they are fifth on a 15 inch spokes uh, meaning that they actually go out by some probably by some seven seven uh, inches wider than the uh, original vehicle so we have here a uh, storage compartment where i store a lot of my uh, my uh, stuff that I use for maintaining and servicing the vehicle as we are on the road. This is uh, some uh, one meter deep chassis here and uh, the, uh, the vehicle actually has like six wheels drive so all the drives can be mounted at the same time and actually locked so you can lock all six wheels so they rotate and spin at the same time but the real magic is in these uh, in these uh, axles so these are these are these are uh, what do you call it always it always uh, still my mind Oh, it's always totally out of my mind. These are portal axles. Portal, which is similar as to the Hummer vehicles. If you look at the ball here in the, the, the where the drive is, it is actually as high as the over here on this uh, Toyota Land Cruiser 60 series on 44 inch tires. So there is actually the same height under the drive, under the uh, axle. You have a same clearance on a 38 inch tires on the portal axles as on a 44 inch tires on a regular axle like this one. This is actually an axle from uh, Patrol. I, uh, it's a IJ61. And uh, because they are the strongest ones that are available underneath these ones. But these are very, very strong, robust. And they also, they are really, really good because they kind of, but when you lock everything here, this car is like a uh, tank. It's very, very low gear. And it actually, actually crawls through almost everything i so far have not managed to get it stuck hopefully never will on the other hand as you can see here it is not a speed wagon it is actually very like 80 kilometers an hour is the normal speed and then for fun of it we put like in a wind gust 40 to 50 kilometers an hour just to make fun of the uh, of the uh, of the drive train uh, these are specially made for driving in sand or snow they will deflate uh, down to yeah underneath 5 psi and then what we have here is that we have a a, a little compressor which we can use to there's a compressor in the back here which can be used to refill the tires this little jack is actually just to uh, solve it this is the uh, the electricity for the house i will show you inside the house later uh, the uh, the uh, electricity for the engine is over here so this is the house batteries you just pull out these individually inflate each tire 
after going on the snow on the glaciers. I've actually gone glacier traveling on this one several times. Most spectacular staying for three days on a glacier called Snæfellsjökull. It is uh, getting a little bit of surface rest. Rest. This is a car in active duty. And if you go on the other side, I will show you in here. Yeah, so in here we see that it is in active duty, as I said. Over here, there is a main switch. It's just is to completely take off the electricity while the car is in storage, making sure that it doesn't run out of uh, run out of batteries. It's also there, of course, the head switch. It turns off everything. Over down, over here, there is a there is an access to the engine compartment. It can be accessed also from underneath and as well from uh, in the back. So this can be used to access the engine. Can I have it? Yeah, so here you see the engine. It is an ancient, ancient B30 engine, a petrol engine. It's not very uh, high power. It's only 130 horsepower. These were though used in um, rally cars back in the days. So very, um, very reliable engine on the other hand and uh, very strong. The power is sufficient and the gasoline uh, consumption is quite high. Uh, but the car is anyway so low geared that it doesn't really matter that much. It hooks up to these hooks and you close it with this lever here. And then there's like a little box for all kinds of things. Then you have the uh, controls for the the uh, drives from drift. That means the front wheel drive. You have a uh, the uh, lock for the differential in the uh, front front axle, and both the rear axles will lock together with this one. So you can actually lock all the six wheels. And that makes a whole lot of difference to uh, the uh, drive performance, of course. Basically, that makes it into a tank and uh, allows it to uh, to crawl through anything I've seen so far. Then you, uh, there is a main switch over here, and it has a starting button over here. This is a, <laughs> this is a hand gas. That means uh, hand. Uh, petrol and then you got the choke over here and we always started with the choke and it always starts quite easily with the choke now we leave it let it warm up. Pretty simple uh, construction of the gauges. One funny thing here is that you can actually activate each, uh, each uh, wiper separately. So they are like going in a different rate. Just select the uh, speed for the uh, for the engine. And it 
quite quickly in swamp. And has a very good turn rate. And then we have here an old GPS module. Not that I counted for anything. And this is the interior Swedish instructions from back in the days when it was manufactured. It has a hydraulic steering that actually comes from Toyota Land Cruiser. And then you have a four gear system and high and low system. Actually, what you do is you actually, you um, actually put it like to the end and into the lows and then the reverse way to uh, access the high gears. That's about it that I remember over here. We got light strips. Yeah, pretty neat old thing. Pretty simple, pretty basic, pretty rudimentary. You can heat the battery, the lights, the uh, low lights and the highlights. Hazard lights and uh, connection lights, uh, the highlights, charging light, and oil warning light, the choke light actually never goes off, and then you have like a central heating, of course, no air condition. Yeah. And a 12 volt system here for uh, for uh, charging phones and etc. And then there is a 24 volt system over here with a different plug. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, driver's cabin. As you enter the main cabin, the first thing that greets you is this uh, refrigerator, a tiny little thing. Uh, there's 24 volt, and runs on the car's battery. Underneath that we have a locker for the uh, gas, because we have here a uh, refrigerator compressor and gas for the uh, gas uh, cooking and the, uh, the uh, gas stove and uh, this is a trauma gas heater comes in very handy on the glaciers but the uh, actual vehicle is quite well insulated so the inside of the vehicle is quite thick the house is quite thick and the vehicle is quite well insulated then we have running water here. There's a water tank underneath here. This is a gas sensor. And we have a, a table, a closet here for storage space. Another one here. And another storage space here. Then we have storage space underneath here, all kind of camping gear for food and utilities. We have a two burner stove. Uh, there is some storage space here on the top. And we have a little radio here as well as in the main cabinet up front. Then we have storage space underneath here. This is what is known to be as a kind of a little pantry. And furthermore, we can set this table down and then we got a sleeping arrangement here. So let me do that. So now the sleeping arrangement has been 
prepared. This is basically a king size bed. It is actually 180 or 175, 170 centimeters in between. So you, you can practically sleep this way, though you normally sleep that way. And uh, underneath these uh, mattresses, uh, we have war storage. So here I have like a utility stuff, like my ice spike tent, some uh, floating caps and whatnot. We also have here a lot of, uh, lot of uh, spare parts. And this is the part where the underneath this part there is a um, there is the uh, drawer like the cabinet from accessible from behind of the car and underneath the uh, brownish part let me see there is the uh, there is the um, water water reserve for the uh, sink oh. so if we pull it up like this we have the water reserve here a tank for the water and we have four, furthermore storage space but this is actually where the uh, the central heating is and this is where we have more of the like i packed a lot of spare parts in here all kinds of glow plugs and whatnot you might need at the road this way we need to remove the table and then we can this is the um, central heating unit and it blows out here and it is fed by gas and it's a very nice efficient central heating and then the table falls in place underneath here and the mattresses in place like that This is actually a sleeping bag and a pillow kind of a neat thing that I found in Ikea. And then you just mount the these pillows on top of the table that is now making it flat instead of working as a table. And then you have this big, big bed on the glaciers. You got two lights over there and like a skylight that can be opened this used to be the gun tower back in the military days 24 volt system it is controlled here and here behind is a charger for when you use the what is known as the the land electricity like is on the boats then we have here a sleeping bag some more spikes for the eyes and here is actually I won't be showing it off now but if you move these butterfly bolts off you can actually open up here and access the engine compartment really really neat and you have here a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket and i presume no that's 2 220 i presume yeah pretty neat i think that this is only to be used on the uh, on the uh, with the land uh, electricity like connected to the 
to the um, to the land. And we got yeah yeah I forgot this is Victron. Uh, this must be the the uh, for the solar cells. So we actually have solar cells here on the top. Let's just open up here and show you. Yeah, there are two solar cells here. This can be seen if uh, it's no overexposed. These two are solar cells on the top. Oop. That closes it. Yeah, so it's refrigerator, running water, two burner stove, and plenty of comfort. No TV because it's not needed. I use iPad. We have though like bed lights on each side. And in the back there, there is a tiny little window. And to be honest, there is a reason why these windows are so tiny. And that reason is because, and it used to be named the Ram by the former owner. That is because you don't want to lose too much heat via the windows on the glaciers. This is absolutely one of my favorite vehicles. Definitely my favorite vehicle. So I think that concludes the tour. If there is any interest, be in touch for further info. There are a lot of neat things I could cover, like this uh, here. I believe that this was to, uh, there are two there in the back, to strap a hanging, uh, to hang up the, uh, the carriage for the wounded. And that's why we have it always good to have a strap to carry the wounded. And thank you very much for joining me on this tour. I'll put in some nice videos from my glacier expeditions to, to show how capable this car is. Thank you.